I want to thank you for joining us and viewing the first Meet the Professor series of the new year. In this month's special segment, we are featuring Rachel Grove Warbaugh, college archivist in the Earl and Anita Hess archives and special collections here at Elizabethtown College. Rachel will be giving us a special insider's look into the archives, including a virtual tour, which I am super excited for. <laughs> Rachel, thank you so much for being here with us today. Oh, thank you, Caitlin. Before we begin, I would like to share a little bit about Rachel. Rachel is the archivist at Elizabethtown College, where she is responsible for all aspects of the Earl and Anita Hess archives and special collections. She's a certified archivist and holds a Bachelor of Art History from the University of Delaware and a Master's of Library and Information Science in Archival Studies from the University of Pittsburgh. Rachel is passionate about promoting the Hess Archives as a teaching and learning resource for the college community. She especially enjoys working directly with students and has taught courses on local history, archives, and digital humanities. Without further delay, Rachel, take it away. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and share my presentation on the screen. Here we go. All right. Well, first of, all, I first of all, I want to thank you for this opportunity to share what the Hess Archives has to offer. Um, this presentation is just a brief overview of the types of materials we collect and make available to researchers. I'm also going to share some ways that alumni can get involved, and we will end, as Caitlin mentioned, with a brief video tour of the archives. So first, some background on archives. Um, archives, like libraries, make information available to researchers, but they differ from libraries in several ways. Um, they generally consist of unpublished materials and materials that are unique to the repository. Um, they're more likely to be rare and or fragile, and most archives and special collections materials do not circulate. So in other words, you cannot check them out like a library book. If you wanna use materials in person, um, you often will need to make an appointment or register in advance. Um, and there are typically research policies in effect for safe handling, uh, things like not using uh, pens or markers, um, no food or drink, using gloves for certain kinds of materials. Um, so the types of materials in archives and special collections can vary quite a bit. Um, Paper-based collections are common and can include things like letters and diaries, uh, business records, maps, scrapbooks, um, and much more. Um, archives also often contain audiovisual materials like photographs, sound recordings, motion picture film. Some archives, um, including the Hess archives, also contain artifacts and artwork, but these types of materials are more often found in museum collections. Uh, contemporary archives also contain digital files, including physical materials that have been digitized and what we call born digital materials, or in other words, materials that were actually created in a digital format. So um, the college built the Hess Archives and Special Collections as a brand new state-of-the-art facility in 2014 to house rare, fragile, and unique materials collected by the library, as well as the college's Young Center for Anabaptist and Pietist Studies. Um, collection strengths include, um, first of all, a history of the college, um, but we also emphasize Anabaptism, um, Church of the Brethren, Amish life and culture, global Anabaptism, uh, the effort at cloister, um, peace, reconciliation, and experiences of war. And then finally, we also collect select personal papers of Anabaptist and Pietist scholars. So I wanted to give a, just a few examples of the types of materials that we collect that might be interesting to some of the alumni viewing this video. Um, first example is the Anna Blau Letters and Diaries from China. Uh, Anna Blau was a missionary um, in China in the 19-teens and 1920s. Uh, we use these uh, materials in history and religious studies classes. They've also been digitized, um, and they're one of several missionary collections we have in the Hess archives. Um, another example of a wonderful missionary collection is the Byron and Nora Flory teaching clause. Um, 
Byron and Nora were Church of the Brethren missionaries in Shanxi province in China in the 1920s, and the claws were used when Byron did evangelism in rural Chinese villages. Um, the claws were hung up in tents to teach about hygiene and family life, as well as just the Christian faith. Um, and they're digitized and available on a collaborative research site called ChineseChristianPosters.com. So I encourage checking those out as well. One of our largest collections in the Hess archives is the Donald B. Crabill papers. Um, if you haven't already checked it out, Professor Crabill was featured in the fall 2002 uh, Meet the Professor series. So, so check out the video if you haven't already. Um, if you don't know Dr. Crabill, he's an emeritus professor and expert on Amish life and culture. Um, and these have been used by a number of classes, particularly in religious studies, sociology, and anthropology. Um, just this past fall, we used them in um, Dr. Stephen Nolte's first year seminar. So students first starting out right away at Elizabethtown, um, already getting to um, see some of the wonderful things we have in the, in the Hess archives. Uh, Dr. Crable's collection is one of several Amish related collections we have here at E-Town. Um, one of the coolest, I think, is the Dennis L. L. Hughes photographs of the Amish. There are over 18,000 images in this collection, and a selection of them are featured on J Scholar. Um, J Scholar is an open collection of scholarly and artistic works by students, faculty, staff, um, alumni, and then also other members of the Elizabethtown College community. Um, and it's a, a service of a high library. So if you haven't checked out J Scholar in general, I def definitely recommend checking that out. Um, these images were taken by um, Dennis Hughes. He's based in East Petersburg, Pennsylvania. And they're of Amish in the United States with a special emphasis um, on the Amish in Lancaster County. The images date from the 1980s through the early 2000s. Um, Hughes first became interested in the Amish when he was a young boy growing up in Lewistown, Pennsylvania, which is near the Big Valley area. Uh, subjects include buggy styles, uh, agricultural work, mud sales, Amish schools, Amish children, and much more. Um, and the collection also includes photographs taken for Dr. Craybill's books, Amish Enterprise and the Riddle of Amish Culture. Um, this collection, I think, is going to be of special interest to um, many alums. Um, the Ira Herr Dear Coach Collection. Um, these are letters from alumni and students who participated in World War II or served as conscientious objectors. And they were writing to um, Ira Herr, who was the athletic director and coach here at E-Town for decades. Um, the materials were actually donated by Coach Herr's daughter, Lois Herr. I think she also wrote a book about these materials that's available called Dear Coach. Um, and Lois Herr is also an E-Town alum. We have hundreds of rare books um, in the Hess archives. And one of the newest um, and most exciting rare book collections that we have is the Clarence E. Spone collection of rare imprints from the early presses in Ephrata, Pennsylvania. Um, Ephrata was a religious community established in 1732 by Conrad Beisel. And now it's a, histor a Pennsylvania Historical and Museum Commission site. Um, Spone worked at the Effort of Cloister from 1968 to 1996, and over the years, he slowly acquired um, an impressive personal collection of Ephrata materials. This joins other rare Ephrata materials in the Hess archives, including two manuscript music books. You see one of them um, in detail there on the screen. Uh, we also have several copies of the 1748 Effort of Martyr's Mirror. Um, there's, an, there's an example there on the screen as well. And um, that book is actually the largest printed in pre-revolutionary war America. It's over 1500 pages. So you can imagine um, hand cranking a press that many times. <laughs> it's pretty amazing, amazing um, artifact. Now more than ever is a wonderful time to explore the digital collections that we have um, made available on the High Library website and the Hess Archives website. Um, of special interest to alums, we have yearbooks um, dating back to 1922. They've all been digitized and you can explore those online, find your own, own yearbook or that of your friends. Uh, we have college newspapers and magazines back to 1904, which are all searchable. A full run of the college course catalogs, 
Um, and we have a wonderful um, historic image collection. There are over 3,000 photographs of college history um, that you can explore there. And then finally, um, we have a digital audio and video collection. And if you check that out, you're going to find lectures, special events, and even some college commencement films um, there as well. So maybe you might find your own, own commencement film online. Uh, our collection brings scholars to Elizabethtown from around the world, but we've always emphasized student use of the materials. I'm just going to give some examples of the different ways uh, students have gotten involved. Um, I regularly work with uh, faculty on course-based projects, activities, and assignments, and courses are in a variety of disciplines. We try to emphasize active hands-on learning with primary source materials. Um, just two examples here. So for several years now, I've worked with Dr. Tara Moore's technical writing class, Dr. Moore, also an E-Town alum. Um, and students have researched and created detailed descriptions of our college and Church of the Brethren records. Um, this past year, they also did uh, descriptions of Dennis Hughes photographs of the Amish that we're going to add online. So students helping out with, with collections that are going to be made available soon. Um, I also often work with religious studies classes, and one of my favorites over the years was um, a few years back, um, a New Testament class. Um, students read and discussed in class uh, pamphlets in our collection that relate to brethren responses to issues of peace and war. Um, and then in an assignment, the students were asked to explain how these pamphlets cited the New Testament and shared these findings with local members of the Church of the Brethren. Um, this discussion with the church members was in a second later session, which I attended, and it was a really wonderful experience to see the students um, you know, putting into action and really um, understanding and having a real wonderful dialogue with, with people about what they had learned um, from the archives. Um, so archives are a wonderful way to um, explore digital humanities projects. Um, and example here, in the fall of 2019, I co-taught a Mellon grant funded um, archives and digital humanities course with Dr. David Kenley. And we focused on the Teachers for West Africa program, which was based at the college from 1962 to 1972. Um, students created mapping projects, a podcast, and an online exhibit um, with the records in this collection. And I have the link there. You can explore the digital exhibit yourself and check out the podcast and all the um, wonderful resources that the students created from, from the archives. Um, over the years, we've had several students um, do their honors in the discipline research um, from materials in the Hess archives. Um, just two examples here. Um, Anne-Marie Hartzell, class of 2016. Um, Anne-Marie um, worked in the archives and she helped digitize a large po portion of our photograph collection. And then she went on to write her senior honors in the discipline paper on brethren during the Civil War. Um, more recently, Caitlin Rossiter, class of 2020, she actually just graduated in December. So congratulations, Caitlin, if she's watching this. Um, she processed and partially digitized the papers of Lloyd and Ellen Cunningham. The Cunninghams were brother and missionaries who served in China, the Philippines, Philippines and India, and they were imprisoned by the Japanese Imperial Army from 1941 to 1945. And, and Caitlin did some wonderful work with that papers and really became an expert on, on that time period and the Cunninghams. Um, so if you're not familiar with this, every year for over a decade now, um, the college has had Scholarship and Creative Arts Day, which is a wonderful day where students all over campus share um, the research that they've been doing in their classes. And we've had several archives-based um, presentations at SCAD. A couple examples here. Um, Emily Weeder, class of 2019, um, she graduated with a double major in French and history, and she's now a graduate student at the University of Iowa. Uh, she worked in the archives for several years and also presented at SCAD on her research related to the Brethren in Nigeria. Uh, above her there on the slide is uh, Crystal Uminski. Um, she actually took a class with Dr. Crabell back in 2015 and presented at SCAD. Um, and she presented on um, what she was finding in Amish newspapers. And we actually have all of those in the Hess archives that um, you can explore if you, if you visit us. Um, so it's great to see um, an example there of, of a student using those, those newspapers. 
And then finally, last one there on the slide, um, we had a SCAD poster presentation back in the spring of 2016 um, for Honors 170. This was a course that looked at the history of Elizabethtown, and I co-taught it with Jean-Paul Benowitz. Um, students researched local architecture, and they found grants that could possibly support the preservation of those buildings. So really, you know, put, doing something very tangible with what they were learning from their um, archival research. Uh, final example I have here is SCARP. Um, so another, another acronym that we have here at the college for a student um, research program. It stands for the Summer Scholarship Creative Arts and Research Projects. And so every summer students get an opportunity to do these in-depth uh, research projects and get some funding um, from the college. Um, we've assisted several SCARP students over the years with research, um, and we even hosted one SCARP student in the archives, uh, Jillian Engelbrecht, class of 2018. She helped process the Donald Crabill paper. She did um, pretty much the bulk of the processing herself, over 84 linear feet um, and growing of, of his collection as a SCARP project. Um, so yeah, those are just a few examples. Um, we also have students who do semester long internships. Um, we always employ several students um, here in the S archives as student assistants. So one of the great joys of my work is, is really getting to work uh, directly with students. So you're probably wondering um, how can alumni also get involved? So first off, please send us your research questions if you're you know, dying to know who sang that song on that day or who, who was our commencement speaker, all those kinds of things. I love answering your questions. And then also, of course, when it's safe to do so, please visit us in person. Um, many of you have noticed we started putting um, an image from the archives in the monthly e-newsletters and we ask um, alumni if they can help us identify folks in the photos. So uh, check those out and please contact me, of course, if you, if you recognize anyone. Finally, um, consider donating materials to the Hess Archives. Um, we're particularly interested in your personal experiences as an E-Town student. Um, so the kinds of things we're looking for, uh, personal student photographs and scrapbooks, um, if you have any of the records of student clubs or sports, and then also too, if you have uh, records of alumni reunions or activities, um, I would love to chat about what you, what you might have that you'd like to donate. And then just in general, please contact me um, if you have any questions um, about the archives, I'm always happy to, to talk with alums and answer your questions. So we're going to end here with um, a quick little behind the scenes um, view of the Hess archives. Um, I'm really excited to share this, this video, video with you. Um, you're going to see our reading room, our climate controlled storage space, and you're going to see some um, collection materials close up. Um, including Chinese foot binding shoes brought back by missionaries, um, a seven, 17th century Geneva Bible, a brethren foot washing tub, and uh, one of our 1740s um, Ephraim music books. So I hope you enjoy it.
Rachel, thank you so much for, for sharing that all with us. That was truly incredible. Um, I have a couple questions for you if you wouldn't mind answering them. Um, so, so first, I got to ask you, so the, the Dennis Hughes, um, the photos, you said there were 18,000 of them. Yeah. So yeah. are you, and I'm trying to visualize this, are you, you're feeding 18,000 different photos into like a scanner of sorts or like how does that whole process work? So we've started with just a selection of them. So we got some help from the Young Center and we picked out what are some ones that would be a, a particular interest to scholars or students. Um, we would love to digitize all of them down the road, but um, yeah, we've only done a few hundred at this point. Okay. And, but yeah, they, they go onto scanners. They're actually, um, they're slides. So we can do, I wanna say like 30 of them at a time on the scanner we have. And uh, my students' assistants have gotten really good at wow. um, of doing that kind of scanning. But yeah, yeah, it's, there's a lot, there's a lot of potential there with that collection. To share. Okay. Okay. Very cool. And Rachel, tell me a little bit about how, do you ever wear like protective hand, like how, tell me what kind of protective materials I guess you use to handle some of the items you received to the archives. Yeah. So um, a lot of times like kind of the image and the media of an archivist is wearing white gloves and you'll actually see me in the video um, using white gloves occasionally. Um, we mainly use those for um, artifacts and for um, photos where you might get like handprints on them. Um, sometimes like things like metals that that you don't want to get uh, fingerprints on. So a lot of times, though, just having clean, dry hands is is the best uh, course of action when using with using archival materials. But um, but yeah, you do sometimes have to have to wear gloves of some kind to just protect the materials from you. Or I don't know. Sometimes things are also they're disintegrating too. So you, I don't know just as much like I don't want to get don't want to sure. get. Dirty. Yeah. Well, with that, Rachel, now I don't know if this might put you on the spot a little bit, but but during your time at Etown, what has been one of the most interesting items or item you received? Oh, gosh, most interesting item. Or favorite item, even. Oh, um, I'm trying to think. Uh, I think that I think the um, Dennis Hughes photographs, I get so excited about those because they're just some of them are are things you really wouldn't see otherwise. And it's just as a as a collection, it's impressive that it's you know the bulk of it and sure. all of, all of the work. And I loved so one of the wonderful things about being an archivist is also getting to meet with the donor. And I remember um, going to his home and chatting with him and hearing stories about the friendships he made um, with with Amish people over the years and just how he got interested in photography. So yeah, I I that one in particular, I really. I really love that collection. I loved, I loved receiving it and, and getting to talk with him. Sure, very cool. And and Rachel, one thing that really stuck out to me was the technical writing you talked about with um, Dr. Moore. And what I found interesting is that, so those students were actually um, taking items from the archives and writing brief synopsis about each each item. I mean, yeah. can you yeah, tell so, a little bit more about that? The the class and yeah. working with the class. Yeah. So. Um, Archival materials are all generally unique. So the, the description of them and making them available, it can be pretty labor intensive. And I forget how it got started. I think Dr. Moore just asked me at one point, hey, do you have any projects that my students um, could, could work on? Sure. And um, I thought, you know what, this is, this is writing. This is technical writing in a sense. And um, she was completely game and has been such a great partner. And um, her students, I think I've really enjoyed it, especially um, getting to learn more about the archives and learn more about the topics that they've been researching. But yeah, they end up, they look at the materials. I show them examples of um, what archival description looks like. Um, and then, then they try their hand at it um, in class. And yeah, we even, we made it work over Zoom uh, this past year with, we used the Hughes photographs because they were easier to just share online. But prior to that in prior years and hopefully in the future, um, you know, I brought them right into the archives and they each got assigned a box that they, they worked with and, and created a description for. So cool, Rachel. And, and Rachel, with that, in, in talking about the students, have you seen um, any of your students in particular who've gone on to do archival type work or anything along those lines? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, Anne-Marie Hartzell that was um, 
in the in the um, presentation. I know she works for a digitization vendor. Last I heard, she worked for a digitization vendor. Um, a couple times at conferences, I've had students walk up to me that were were former E-Town students. Um, I know a couple students have talked to me that they are they're pursuing. Um, you know, work in an archival field. Yeah, actually, I can think of a few. So yeah, it's it's a good also opportunity for students to, to think about a potential career path as well. Oh, definitely, definitely. Well, Rachel, I just want to thank you so much again. You know, we, we heard a lot of history about the Brethren, but we also heard a lot of history about our own Blue Jay heritage. And um, I know for, you know, being an alum, that's just so special to me. So so thank you so much again for joining us. And, and thank you all all to everyone who's watching this. Um, We'll have a, have a feature another professor next month um so don't forget to check check that out then but but rachel thank you so much again for joining us thank you caitlin i really enjoyed it